So very good morning, uh, my dear students. So we were discussing uh, from the last class the insect pest of crucifer vegetables. So this in this pipeline. So today we are going to continue with the the second part of the rest of the crucifer vegetables pests, as well as the insect pest of tomato and okra. So. Last uh, class, we were discussing the majority of the pests that are attacking on the cruciferaceae vegetables. We call it as a caterpillar complex. So in that uh, series, so another caterpillar, it may be called it as a species of a cabbage, some blooper, Pisonopolis yarni, or the Trichopolis yarni, what we studied in the last class, this is an another species we call it as a Tysonopolis or Chelsea, or Trichopolis or Chelsea, or sometimes it is called as a Pollusia peponis. Pice belongs to order Lepidoptera and family. So there is uh, some differences between that uh, Trichopolis yarni and the Trichopolis or Chelsea. So I can go back to the slide to show that um, Trichopolis yarni. Uh, this is a green color caterpillar. Right? It's a green color caterpillar. Then you can expect a similar white marking, right? Similar white marking. So here, similar parallel white marking in the mid dorsal line as well as in the lateral lines. But you cannot expect uh, much of this fine here, right? That is Trichopolis yarni. In the Trichopolis or Chelsea, you can see there is a slight color changes, differences are there, right? It's a brownish color, as well as you can expect the bit more blackish hair. Sometimes it may uh, replace by a spine. So the slight modifications are there. So therefore, it is called it as a species of this uh, cabbage in the loop. Huh? And in, uh, sometimes it is very confusing in the larval stages, the early larval stages, but in the later stages only you can differentiate by the color. The attack and damage and management aspects are similar what we studied in the Trichopolis journey. Please go and refer that notes too. But I can show you that the differences in the adult, right? So the adult is a moth. Right, so it is a brownish color moth, and you can expect this um, yellowish shading somewhere else in the um, distal portion of these uh, wings, as well as you can expect that uh, um, baby margin in the hindwings, right? Baby margin in the so this is a distribution of uh, uh, this uh, Trichopolisia. Or a Chelsea. So, because it's an earlier map, that's why it is not mentioned here. But the, in Sri Lanka, this is in the yellow uh, category. Sri Lanka under the yellow category. So, this is also defoliating and causes a significant losses in the cabbage family vegetables. And other than the cabbage family vegetables, you can expect some of the attacks in the um, chickpea. And sunflower and the pigeon bee right? Pigeon bee So, and uh, management as the same as the what we studied in the cabbage, Trichopolis yarni. The another pest of the cabbage, again, is a caterpillar, belongs to Lepidoptera, its species belongs to Noctidae, Agrotis ypsilon. It's an Agrotis uh, ypsilon, we call it as a cabbage black cutworm. It is also a polyphagous pest. It can attack more than 200 species, right? 200 species of the crops. Other than the cruciferous, also it can attack, especially in the Solanay uh, potato, right? The Sri Lanka and uh, the pest surveillance category in the yellow. So this is a coast ranges of uh, this uh, pest, the coast ranges of the the four wingers of this because adults are moths. So moth is a bigger moth. These bigger moths are 
active in night because these are belongs to nocturn nocturnal family caterpillars also active in the nights until 3 in star so it, you can um, see that it will be active in the day from the 3rd in star to the 7th in star you cannot see the caterpillars in the daytime because it is going deep in the soil and hiding very close to the rock right so four wings you can see that um, a long narrows long and narrows right these are four wings are the long and narrows than the hind wings and the four wings marked by the very shady in the first two third portion of the four wing and the one third of this uh, last portion is in slight color in the, and the antennal uh, the polymorphism is there in the male and female the female you can expect that antenna is a filiform this is a female right that's what you can if you know did not uh, much uh, attention on this antennal modification because you did not write even to an examination go and refer the entomology how what are the different types of antenna you studied for different insect groups so this is an uh, filiform right the filiform antenna and the males you can expect the plumose is a feathered plumose is like a mosquito right mosquito male mosquito wing span is nearly about uh, up to 5 cm this mean 50 mm so you can imagine that how much uh, the bigger that one is so eggs are laid uh, singly or the group right eggs are uh, laid as a singly and group so whitish yellow eggs and it will become a darker when it uh, catching time is closer because of the development of these immature stages inside the egg. Lay on densely grouping plants closer to the soil surface because these uh, uh, moths are nocturnal. So that's so they are laying eggs very closer to the shady areas it's because moths are prefer the shade times and also larval also hiding inside the soil because it's a photo negative attractive from the third instar to seven instar and also to prevent from harsh and environmental condition desiccation from the heat that's what the females are laying eggs in the shady areas incubation time is maximum of seven days or uh, one week so it can catch in within the uh, within the uh, seven days or depending on the environmental yes. Lava hide during the daytime and active in the night. That's what. So in the early, if you're going there in the cabbage field, you cannot expect any damages, right? In the daytime. If you're going there in the early morning, the next day you can find your cutting of this cabbage seedling. If it is in the seedling stages, it looks like a grass cutting. So for the cow grazing, right? So how, because it's cut, at closer to the soil surfaces. That's what is very high, huge damages are caused by this pest if it is not properly monitored. Right? So light gray is union color of the top. You can, you can see that is a, a larval stages are grayish color, no stripes or no marking. It's a fully a smoky like stage. So it pupate inside the soil. So you can see this picture showing that how this lava are damaging so very closer to the soil so you see plants are cut at closer to the soil surfaces and then in the sometimes in the daytime so it will come in the night in the top regions and aerial part of the plant it can cut and eat that's what we call it as a cut work right cut. so damage and symptoms are young larvae feed in tender leaves of the seedlings so, right the young larvae up to three in star so they can active in the daytime so they can the scrap burn needs, that's what you can find the short hops. From third to seven inch type, become a negatively phototaxi. So that's what it force uh, eat mainly the night. Cutting of the young leaves and partial cutting and wilting of the seedling. So if it is partially cut, then you can observe the wilt symptoms. So you may confuse that the wilt symptom may be the, from the diseases. But actual cause is the pest. Right? So you have to be very careful so when you are. Um, going if you are uh, planning to have an entrepreneur or in for the commercial vegetable production or if you are in plant protection of future in future 
then therefore if you are going the field farmer field as an experiential learning farmers will uh, may ask these questions right you may get an experience so mature plants foliar feeding and reduce the vigor and need so these are the symptoms of this cutworm attack you can see early insta shot holes and uh, later insta larvas cutting and partial cutting therefore you can expect the wilting and uh, foliar feeding reduce the vigor and so this so the management is similar to the whatever the caterpillars we studied for especially army worm as well as the semi looper in this uh, uh, management aspect you can use here as well and crucifer another be uh, is this, this is not a, belongs to lepidoptera so up to this slide so it's a caterpillar complex from here this one is a cabbage flea beetle we call it as a phyllotrita cruciferae belongs to chrysomelidae coleoptera right chrysomelidae coleoptera or this is we call it as a crucifer flea beetle or cabbage flea beetle it's a very small shiny blackish color or blackish blue color beetle nearly about 2 mm long so that's what if you are going inside the cabbage field sometimes you may feel is jumping of something it's very small things jumping and jumping of flying you may get confused so because of these flea beetles so in the in the hind legs they have the modification that's how it can able to jump from one leaf to another leaf this look like a fly right so high in femur facilitated for a jump it's a metallic and but very shiny that's what is called as a metallic luster in the um, elytra elytra wing is very shiny dorsal region is a very shiny so you can expect uh, this one uh, will not be alone as a single beetles in the leaf the cabbage field you can accept it will lead as a groups right it will as a groups. so females especially laying eggs inside the cells you see or very closer to the vicinity of the plant the, pl the females are laying eggs in a singly or in small clusters so therefore the emerging young ones eat lateral or tender uh, the roots root hairs of the plants right root hairs of the plants eggs are elliptical creamish or yellowish color so larvae it will emerge two weeks from the egg and it can eat the roots so it will pass through the three to uh, three to four insta maybe three insta maximum uh, three to four weeks time so nearly about one month time inside the soil so normally the larvas are living to 5 to 12 cm in soil depth so they are for why because in this uh, area only you can expect a tremendous root hairs so they are for because uh, for eating to getting the uh, the abundance of food the larva they are living in the depth soils so pupal stages is nearly about 10 days and eggs to adult it will take two months time you can see this is the life cycle of the uh, beetle cabbage flea beetle we call it as an phyllotrita cruciferae chrysomelidae polyoptera right females laying eggs in from this eggs you can come out with the uh, within 10 days or so it will take sometimes two weeks time so larval period or 10 to 15 days so it will come as an adult totally it will take two months time this is a larva inside the soil if you are taking the or if you are observing the females sorry if you are observing the flea beetle in your field definitely you can get the soil sample and you can analyze it you can see lot of white color leg legs larva leg legs larva you can find it is a goat as a grass so damaging so because adults are feeding and the larval stages are feeding in the roots so they are for the young seedlings show the wilt symptoms because root hairs is get cut and also is a standard growth so you may confuse with that if it is showing the wilt symptom whether it is a diseases or it is a cutworm attack or this is a flea beetle attack so symptoms will confuse you you have to find the root cause it will take time if you are not a clear idea right adult feeds uh, on cotyledon and the leaves by making innumerable holes not the short hole it's an innumerable holes not riddling right so diamondback moth attack is a riddling of the leaves 
here they are making innumerable holes making this innumerable holes is a bit bigger than the readily right than the readily oh and cotyledon also eating because it's attacking the seedlings yes it in a way leaves dry up and unfit for consumption if it is making a small holes the consumer preference will be less and also if it is eaten too much there is no green matter content the secondary infection will start and leaves get dry or brownish color so unfit for consumption even you cannot my it will be a market right special kind of decay in order we call that like a foul order you can observe if you are going in the cabbage field it's an indication that uh, severe cabbage is a flea beetle attacks the because of these secondary metabolites emitting from the leaves give you a clue that flea beetle attack is too much in the cabbage fear with an i show you i told you so it will be there in the leaves as a group right so thousand and like that it's too much because it's very small one no it's very difficult to find it but if you are going and goes observation only you can able to so management so this uh, be these uh, beetles are surviving in the alternate host we call it as a gynandropis it's a weed right it is there in the picture this is there in everywhere on the agricultural land so if you are not uh, removing the weeds in the uh, in the not cultivating time right in the fallow time so if the weed is there then it can survive in these weeds multiply it when you are started uh, cultivation of this main crop it will move and it will attack so and also in the cabbage field also if you are not uh, weeding properly then definitely this uh, weed act as a attractor and breeding grounds for these beetles so therefore you should very careful you should remove these weeds completely and also intercropping with an onion if you are intercropping with an onion so you can reduce as a um, flea beetle attack why because it is emitting odors from the onion it will some of this uh, it can chase it right it can chase it and plowing the field after harvesting because the larval stages and pupal stages are in the soil so deep plowing and exposure to the soil to the environment so it can remove it can kill immature stages so if the incidence is high you can go for the carbaryl because of the coleopterans are then we prefer to have a carbaryl you can manage it but uh, i told you in the initial classes so, uh, cabbage is a most pesticide consumable crops in sri lanka right because of this caterpillar attack caterpillar complex as well as this flea beetle attack because insect know which one have the high nutrition cabbage is a high nutrition uh, crop so that's what you can expect so up to here these are the major pest of the cabbages then we can go for a minor pest of cabbage aphids so brevicon brassicae is a specific or specific uh, aphids of the cabbage plant we can expect the cabbage family crops fall crops on epididae hemiptera so they are living as a group and sucking the pests uh, sorry sucking the sap so that's what so this is creating the damages because crinkling of leaves and leaves become yellowish and not market on the able to market this is an uh, prevalence so because in sri lanka it is not there because of this minor pest that sort it is not there uh, this is a mummy for you are, if you are severely attacked you can see the cabbage tree this look like here like this and also some of this brownish are there this is because of parasitoids laid eggs inside this is called as mummified aphids the parasitoids can able to manage if the aphid population is increasing if your field is free from pesticides that's so now we are sri lanka is moving towards a pesticide free agriculture another group of aphids here this is a common polyphagous aphid we call it as a pest uh, the mysis persicae mysis persicae also attacking is we call it as a green aphid this is we call it as a black aphids that is also a minor pest this is a mysis mysis persicae it is very big problem in sri lanka here you can see we have to be very careful and another minor pest and polybagus pests are there trip tabasi so thysanoptera trip today they are these are also rasping and sucking the saps that's what you can expect that uh, iranium like markings these markings harden that portion and also uh, the, uh, the cabbage leaves will look like a uh, polish because of these 
crashes and markings. These are the thrips, thrips tabasi attacking. Okay? Sri Lanka, it is a minor crash. But the, and instead of these uh, uh, brassica crops, these thrips can attack in many crops because of polyphagus. And also wind can facilitate the spread of these uh, thrips from one field to another field. Very quickly, if your field, adjacent fields are cultivated by these cotton, not tobacco, and onion, definitely you can expect your cabbage field by these fields. So that's all for the cruciferaceae vegetables. So, and if you are having any doubts, please you can ask the questions. So, next important uh, crop is a tomato. Right? So, tomato is uh, cultivated everywhere in Sri Lanka because of this uh, nutrition, uh, nutritious food, and also it is uh, used for the many uh, various purposes. So, preparing especially this um, the how do we call the um, sources, uh, right? So many type of variety of sources. These are the major ingredients. So that's what it is cultivated all around, all around the world. Tomato in America and still are popular for these uh, sweet tomatoes to prepare for this, especially for the sources. So in this tomato also, in Sri Lanka also, there are different cultivars. Uh, people are cultivating variety of Roma, Tilini, Taringu, T45, KC1 like that. There are several varieties uh, that it has been cultivated by different farmers and also some farmers in Northern region, especially these Palali, Telipali areas, they are having their special own um, selections, right? Own selection, because these lands are very potential for tomato cultivation. There is a tomato cultivation on only few pests, three major pests. One is um, fruit borer, other one is uh, leaf miners, other one is the army worms. These are the major three pests you can come across when you are going there in the tomato field and also they are causing the severe yield losses in tomato. So one is the Spodopteria litura, army worms also, it can eat so it's a polyphagous pest. I told you from the beginning when we started studying so polyphagous pest, more than 2,000 crops they can target, right? So therefore in that um, range, uh, tomato also one of the host for this Spodoptera, Litura, uh, Noctidae, Lepidoptera. So it can, so you can refer the morphological characters from this uh, whatever the like, uh, uh, crops we, we, I taught you is a character, specific characteristic of leaf army worm. Leaf army worms are mainly targeting to eat the leaves because these females can able to lay more than uh, 800 eggs as a group or in a single. So from the early infestation, and, and also if the ones after the laying as a batches, especially they prefer to lay batches, egg laying as a batches, and covered with their renal tough hairs, right? If they're covering as a batches, if you are scouting them next, removing the eggs, no problem. If it is catch, then immediately after the catching and one or two days, so initially it has a group feeding, then it will segregate individually, it can eat whenever, wherever, if, you are, if the larvas are finding the food source, so tomato seed. In that way, they can finish your whole nursery, especially, if it is attacking the nursery, completely it will finish the nursery. Or if it is your crop is in the seedling stages, if the attack is high, you are monitoring properly, then whole leaves will be eaten away by this pest. That is a, one of the major pests and biology and, and other things we have uh, studied there. So you can see this is a nocturnal. So larvas are eating many larval instars, up to five instars, pupate in the soil, and adults are moths. Right? Adults are moths. So eating the leaves, that's how. So you cannot find these are defoliators. Mainly if you, uh, lava, third, uh, from, from the third insta lava, like an uh, army, the cutworm, they prefer to eat in the night, right? Prefer to eat in the night. And the management, so you can easily manage by using the careful day-to-day -day monitoring. If the egg masses are, if you are finding, you can remove that one. Or if you are mass sharing and releasing of parasitoids like a trichogramma, it can easily control it. 
or if you can go for a not the salt crops you can go for a mixed cropping uh, as a trap crops with the sunflower and castor and setting of pheromone traps in the way you can able to manage this so botanicals can also work in the larval the early larval they are very sensitive to botanical especially in the neem kernel extracts right neem kernel extracts may mixing with this uh, uh, soap solutions it can work right can work and also the polyheterosis viruses formulations are there and if you are if you have finding any larval attack and with viruses so if you are having the virus uh, in pesticides formulations in your laboratory so you can um, Uh, spray it on the leaves, then the larva will eat, and larva will be die because of this viral attack. So another second important pest is a Helicoverpa armigera. It's a tomato pot borer. <coughs> this is also a polybagus pest, but mainly they are targeting because we are concentrating more on for pot borers because they are targeting economically important part of a crop. For tomato crops, tomato is an economically important part. In the legumes, also this pot borer will attack because they are can able to eat these legume seeds. But I don't know whether you have studied or otherwise the other lectures will uh, cover it or uh, I will cover it in the upcoming weeks. So they it attack especially pots and try to eat making the round hole try to eat in the contact in the tomato right so the, the tomato because The larva is a very bigger larva. It's nearly about five to six centimeter long if it is go, if it is at the last instar, right? And also it is sandalwood color, like an adult. This this color initially it's a greenish color. It will change, like gradually changing with an instar by instar. And also early instars are feeding the leaves, or because the moths lay eggs, especially when they are fruit uh, flowering stages, they know. At in in which cultivation the uh, food will be abundance in that way they are synchronizing their biology, uh, synchronizing their biology. So many I told you these are the polyphagous pest and young fruits. If the tomato pot borer attacking the young fruits, especially larva, make a round holes and eating. The larva will not go inside fully and partially until thoracic region. Will partially go and feed it. It will. It will not eat fully. It will making round holes and eating partially, and will go for the another fruits, making round holes and eating. So if it is continuously eating and eating, if making round holes, then this damage is act as a proxy for the secondary infection if rains come, or if water. If you are setting up an uh, overhead irrigation, then the water, the water induces a fungal and bacterial attacks. In all the fruits will get rot. Right, all the fruits will get rot. So here, these are the eggs. It's yellowish color in the tomato leaves. Females are laying as a group and singing. Right, so like a pomegranate shape eggs is nearly zero point four to zero point six millimeter in diameter. Right. So in the larva, larva one and larva two are yellowish white color with reddishing brown without prominent markings. Larva one and larva two yellowish white, but sometimes. So this lava, it may be the green color too, but it is depend on the environmental conditions. So early in the lava, the lowish white is there, but you can, if you are writing the greenish color, it's okay because sometimes it is a greenish color. When it is going by in third and fourth and fifth, say sixth in star, color will change definitely. It will become a sandal brown color, sandalwood brownish color. And also prominent marks we you cannot expect in the early stage. Head thoracic shield and spa anal shield and thoracic legs are very dark brown to blackish color. Here, thoracic shield, the head, and this is an anal spa, and his legs are brownish to blackish. Color. You can see the prolegs are pro present in the third to sixth and tenth and abdominal segments. Tenth and abdominal segments. That is what. This is a ericiform caterpillar. This is a larva called as a caterpillar, not a semi-lobe or a lobe, right? 
here that's what i told you in the latest stages full grown larva 30 to 40 mm in long 30 to 40 mm in long head is brown color and mottled it's a brown color head and mottled with the dots colors can vary right colors can so vary and crochets of the prolex are arranged in an arc so crochet of the prolex these are the crochets right prolex here you can see that these are the prolex right the prolex so crochet mean uh, that it's like a fill the uh, the pillar right so it can hold very firm like a right? the arrangement is like an arc here okay see longitudinal lines also you can see around the body longitudinal black markings in the right brown color mahogany brown so mahogany brown or brownish color you pop you paint normally in the soil right or sometimes if you are rearing in the container also it can so you paint it so two parallel spines on the posterior tip you can see that and you paint in the soil this is an adult moth right it's a stouted body you can see that is like a um cutworm this is also very stout body wings span is nearly about 4 cm right so four wings are um, mostly blackish and hind wings are whitish color and with a shady blackish marking in the uh, lateral ang it's called as an anal ang the anal ang so females are orange brown color and males are greenish gray color greenish gray color and orange color because this is the color variation you can expect right four wings right and also you can see eight black dots here eight black dots are there in the margin or border of this uh, four wings of this here eight dots are here you can see that antennae covered with the fine hairs it is cannot see through the naked eye but if you are going closer you can see that one fine hairs is covering the antenna so management so you can go for a cob uh, whatever the pesticide uh, recommended for the caterpillar con so any uh, any pesticides any sorry any insecticides recommended for the caterpillar control but so now you cannot use it, the pesticide you now it's very difficult but so you can manage this one if you are cultivating the tomato as a sole crop this incidence will be very high and also this uh, um, pot borer they are targeting no other than these uh, tomatoes right if you are going for a tomato uh, with an um, intercropping with an other crops especially tomato with the leeks or tomato with an uh, cabbage or tomato with an marigold sun sun hemp marigold it's a border crop for the stripe crop definitely you can minimize as a your major crop attack on your major crop and plowing deep plowing because uh, these are nocturnal and pupae inside the soil so after the harvesting so we have to go for a deep plowing so mainly that's what farmers are prefer to go for the disc plowing to expose the lands to the environment and agronomic manipulation also you can do that one so you can uh, go for an uh, uh intercultural operations so then the blue lava will not go for a pupa inside the soil and also you can set up an overhead irrigation to attract this entomopathogenic fungi and bacterial uh, attack to in increase the attack of attack on the your uh, pot borers right your pot borer other than that you can set up this um uh, light traps and the pheromone traps and this mass releasing of uh, entomopathogenic viruses polyhedrosis viruses and parasitoids trigogram and other parasitoids you can release mass releases into the field your time to time definitely you can manage this pest so third important pest of tomato is a leaf miner liromyza trifoli belongs to agromycetic right liromyza trifoli 
uh, and belongs to Agromycidae. This is an another major pest of the tomato because so we, these are the belongs to the diptera. The flies are laying eggs inside the epidermis of these leaves. So these larval are maggots. The maggots are eating without removal of this um, exoskeleton, right? the exoskeleton of the leaves inside and eating on the, all the green matter in a rhythmic pattern, right? rhythmic pattern like uh, coils. Right? Like, uh, that's what sometimes it is confused with the uh, uh, look, the symptoms is look like a uh, snakes on the leaves. That's what sometimes it called as a serpentine leaf minus. Serpent means uh, snake, right? Serpentine leaf minus. So, sclerinizing <coughs> India, uh, eating away the in India green matters, and also they are making holes, uh, mining tunnels in the leaves. So, that uh, tunnels act as a fossil for the secondary inf infection of the fungi and bacteria. If the damages are too high on the leaves, then they are the photosynthesis will be get impaired and also infected leaves will get dry and die. So therefore, your yield it will impact on your yield. Right? So this is also the host of polyphagus. Right? Other than the tomato and legume crops in the seedling stages, you also you can expect. Right? Affect in any style, any stages of the tomato, or maybe seedling, or vegetative, flowering, or fruiting stage, because they are targeting the leaves. But if the moisture is too high, or the plant is very crowded, this preference is very high. The attack will be very high. So females, how they are? Females puncture the leaves, causing the wound, which serve as a site for the feeding and oviposition. Because in the ovipositor, the abdominal part, making a wound, making punch. And the punch, in all the punches, you cannot uh, see the eggs. In certain punches, you, it can lay eggs. Other punches are the feeding holes. So you may confuse it. For example, if you are, select, if you are selecting the mango, or if you are by going to buy your guava, right? If you are finding that certain cavity-like structures or the brown-like markings is an indication of these uh, fruit flies or these leaf miners, especially not leaf miners, it's not in the case, in the fruit flies, laid egg inside. So therefore, definitely you can expect the maggot while you are eating. You should not buy these fruits. Right? It's an indication, you know, because it's a very shallow cavities with the brown markings, indication of the egg. This is a, um, a true also in the snake coat and bitter coat too, fruit flies. So likewise here also, flies puncture the leaves and laying eggs, not all the wounds. In certain wounds, you can expect eggs. Others are feeding sites. Eggs inserted just below the leaf surfaces. So neonate, immediately after the catching, the lava are transparent. That's how it's very difficult to see if you are going even close observations. So tunnel color, silver color, uh, tunnels also transparent. The lava also transparent. That's what it is very difficult. Yellowish orange, turn yellowish orange. Mind the leaves and the PTO, except PTO. So photosynthetic may um, get infected because of the chlorophylls are eaten away. So pupation inside the tunnels. Pupate also inside the tunnels. <clears throat> How you can manage So it's very difficult. That's what I told you. So moita will be attracted. Regular sticky traps. Setting of a sticky trap and regular biological control program, you can do control the adult. Otherwise, the parasitoid will not work because leaf miners are eating inside the tunnels. Pyrethroid chemicals will work. Right, extracts from the marigold, chrysanthemum, even the mortin spell like chemicals if you are pyrethroid, we call it as a pyrethroid. If you are extracting the application. And uh, judicious nitrogen application, you should reduce it. Reduce the nitrogen application, re remove the and burning the infected leaves, and reduces the moisture control and optimum plant density. These uh, practices will help to manage this. This is an adult. Adult minor, you can see blackish color with a yellow. That's how it's different. Sometimes people are confused whether it is a uh, housefly 
or it's a front fly or the leaf mites, all similar like this. But this is here the blackish body, but in the fruit flies, it is a yellowish orange color. The wings are transparent snowboard, but house fly, you cannot expect this uh, yellowish color. That is the difference. In that way, you can differentiate. So, leaf hoppers nowadays is a booming problem. The leaf hoppers are not only here for the tomato, but also for okra as well. Okra as well. So, because these leaf hoppers not only sucking, making the damage, but also transmitting the viruses. Right? Viruses. So, yellow mosaic viruses. Uh, uh, tomato, tobacco leaf viruses, uh, yellow ring spot viruses like that. Many viruses are, has been transmitted by these leaf hoppers. In the uh, tomato also, <coughs> leaves are uh, hoppers. They are eating and uh, they are sucking the saps. That's what your leaves like a crinkle. And other ways, it also they are transmitting the viruses. You also curling of the leaflets. Yellowing of the leaves if it is a too much heat because leaf hoppers normally you can expect more underside of the leaves. Right? So if it is there in the group, they can eat a lot. And also salivary secretion of the leaf hoppers are rich in amylose and inverters. So they are uh, toxogenic to pollen seeds. These chemicals are damaging the pollen seeds. Right? The pollen seed is damage, then it cannot absorb the water much. Then plant will be sometimes so the will symptoms as well. Crops under stress are more susceptible, so therefore the regular management, regular monitoring, setting up these host plant resistance is one of the best way. Otherwise, you can set up the sticky traps. The low sticky traps is the most preferable way. Sometimes, otherwise, if not working, you have to go for a systemic insecticide because leaf hoppers, I mean, Ibida chlorate, it's no set, so anything you can select and you can. So that's all these three pests I have. I wanted to discuss the, these are three pests and leaf minus two. Four, four pests uh, belongs to tomato. And uh, when you are studying, if the pest is common, then you can study the one area, then remind it for where yeah, it can attack is a polypapus. That will, uh, will help you to study easy. And uh, okra pest, pest of okra. Right? So in the okra, is said another important crops, in the okra, there are two or three uh, pests are very important. One is the okra food borer. There are two types, two fruit borers, areas in Siulana, rice, areas vitella. There are two fruit borers. They are attacking okra. That is sometimes it is called as a cotton ball worms. Commonly, okra fruit borers are called as a cotton ball worm because it's a major pest in cotton because both are same crop, same family crops. Belongs to Malvasi, right? It's an Abil Muscus esculandis. Right, the Bosopium indicum. It's a cotton, both are from Malvasia. Right, so Malvasia crops mean the pest attacking the some pet pests are common for the if you host for families. Right, so this is Malvasia again. This cotton bollworm or the craft cotton borers are major problem. Second, uh, second best uh, important best the leaf rollers. Right, so leaf rollers are there. And these leaf rollers are common for whatever they're attacking the hibiscus in your home. They're attacking here as well. And third important pest is uh, uh, leaf hoppers and white flies. <clears throat> right? Nowadays, they are very big problem in okra cultivation because they are transmitting the yellow mosaic viruses and vein clearing viruses in okra. Everywhere problem, even in the northern or anywhere of the Sri Lanka, in okra cultivation, the major drawback is the leaf hoppers. So this is an okra fruit borer and shoot borer. Formerly fruit and shoot borer is not because it is rarely attacking the shoot like a um, brinjal shoot and fruit borer. Lysinodus uh, openalis. Lysinodus openalis of brinjal, uh, brinjal shoot and fruit borer initially attacking shoots then the fruit. But here, this is mainly targeting on the shoot, not uh, 
it was mainly targeting on the fruits not the shoots in very rare cases right very rare cases but people telling that okra fruit and shoot borer but is commonly is called it as a cotton ball bore okra pot bore na okra pot bore don't go for a fruit or shoot okra pot bore areas insulana and areas vitella this is we are going to study the areas insulana noctuidae lepidoptera host range malvasia plants and affected plants are in vegetative stages and flowering stages and fruiting stages so they are affecting the leaves stem and growing point in inflorescence and the fruit bodies but mainly targeting on fruits young growing fruits of position the female sa moths so sorry the adult sa moths right sluggish moth greenish color with mite mark sometimes yellow is green color no mark right so this is a two categories singly or young tender shoots buds and young fruits and or balls the female moths are laying eggs larva or soft growing tissues is attacked at soft growing tissues are attracted that's what they are sometimes it is there according to the shoot also get affected because of the very young soft tissues are there in the shoots color is variable ranging from gray to brownish color through the gray to green color as well the larva pupa yellowish to chocolate brown color and with a white cocoon white cocoon you can see if you are hearing that so management removal of alternate hosts proton crops so you can grow the cotton as a cap crop timely cultivation and host plant resistant can able to manage that some of the parasitoids are there the aloides trichogramma and all these some of the bacteria bt bacteria now that's what so the for the cotton ball problem the cotton they have modified the crops gm crops why right? gm bt cottons nowadays available bt cotton but in the mall okra the people are reluctant because we are using as a vegetables the cotton we use for the just an oil purposes and the bowl purposes right wool purpose that's how they are in allowed right but here if you are not adapting but b2 cotton or if not there bt formulation you can use it if you are using the bt formulation it will not get harm this is a life cycle of this areas vitella and areas insula is an areas insula sorry area insula so that's what you cannot expect any mark right you see the larval stage first stage larva second stage larva this is an egg so how this is an uh, example from the photo same cross here i told you this is a larva so here how it is attacking the pod inside this eating the pods and uh, removing the excreta inside the pod therefore the pods get dirty right and also it's attract a secondary infection of bacteria right secondary bacteria so the second pest is an okra leaf roll right selecta derogata pyralide lepidoptera this is a common pest would have seen that even the leaf rolling of this your hibiscus plants when in the home garden right in your home garden or oh, this is a leaf rolling of here this is pyralide because is um, these are the most true but it is an active in data that's what is belongs to pyralide so in sri lanka it is under surveillance of yellow category so because not in red so host plants are malvasia plant families hibiscus also has malvasia family vegetative part leaves are um, get damaged so affected parts are damaged and reduces the photosynthetic capacity because leaves are rolled then it will not get the photosynthetic capacity so we position the Moths are laying egg in singly or cluster under surface of the leaves, like a sago pearl. And larva feeding from the emergence of the larva, especially initially they are feeding under surfaces, then will become on the over surface in the move to the over surfaces and rolling by making so. If you are, if you are going there very closely, the larva so in the salivary glands, in the salivary glands, they will produce the saliva and making the move the head like this and make the leaves become the roll this larvas are very active you are going to touch it will move forward and backward 
we are touching in the head, it will move backward. Touching in the backside, it will move forward. It's a greenish color with brownish thoracic seal. Right? Greenish brownish thoracic, thoracic leaves. Here you can see these are the leaf rows. So you have brownish thoracic seals, the greenish color lava. So making here, these are the saliva, you see? Making the saliva and make the leaves into become a roll. You see how they are making the roll. Even Simone lava without any help. Making their using their saliva and making the leaves with roll and roll and roll. Inside the roll, the lava will eat and the excreta also remove inside that. So it's make the leaves ugly and attract the pathogens. Leaf loading reduces the photosynthesis. Right, so parasitoids also you can use and predators, spiders are very good predators and parasitoids also you can use is elasmus and brachymeria, parentis, these are very good parasitoids. So leaf damages are the leaving of the row, this rolling of leaves as well as eating away and these excreta creating these uh, quality, inferior quality. So these are the uh, pests are the um, minor pests of the cotton steiner, we call it as steiner or red cotton bugs. Cotton steiner, so red cotton bugs, 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 this is also a problem in Oktras. Nice, there are syncrulators, there are uh, pentatomic bugs. So, so, so this is a pyrophoridic bug, not pentatomic, a chemic bug. Red sting bugs are there, that is something different. This is red cotton bug. Red cotton bug, because why we have called name came because it's major first identified and major problem for the cotton cultivation, but it's malvasive crops now attacking. These are sucking pests. While sucking the saps, uh, these are also transmitting certain viruses, but not much. Not much. While they are sucking the saps, the leaves become a crinkle and curve. But, but if the this is a minor minor pest, but if you are not properly monitored, then it will become a major pest. So the leaves, the females are laying eggs. So in the leaves, and uh, sometimes in the open pots also they are laying leaves. Damages by sucking the saps, the damaging stages are and the nymphs and adults because these are heavy terrains. You cannot expect the lava in the So another problem, an emerging problem of applying the dry season is a red spider mites, right? Tetanichus telarius, tetanich deem, so red spider mites. This is a very specific problem in okra because if you are going there, your leaf is fading with the green and it become a yellowish color everywhere of the upper surfaces of the leaves. In the dry area, you can go and very close, you can find it, some red movements, very small things under the web because these spider mites are making webs under the here, they are eating. The whole complete body of these mites are red color. That's what we call it as red spider mites. Red spider mites are not insects. They are mite acarids. That's what I am not much concerned with here because if you are going to specialize on agricultural biology, definitely you will study as acarology uh, in the third year second semester as a course. You will much uh, get information from that course. Right, so I will not touch here. Here, this is not much uh, damages acarid, but the acarids you can manage by using the sprinkler irrigations. Right, sprinkler irrigation. How they are making damage because they are scrubbing and eating the uh, sucking the saps. That's how the uh, leaf matters. The everything get uh, <coughs> dry up the leaves. Right, dry up the leaves. You can see use acaricides. Especially sulfurs are very good acaricides. You can set up a sprinkler irrigation because it's a dry season. It is very, this is very hard. But you can try to develop a resistant variety. There is, there is no resistant variety. So fine, Sri Lanka. And white flies. This is also another problem. This is also minor pest, right? Cotton sinus, red cotton bugs, spider mites, and white flies. And another one, leaf hoppers. Leaf hoppers now booming as a major pest, leaf hoppers and white flies because while they are transmitting the virus, still we are studying as a minor pest. 
but it is emerging based as well, right? Bemisia tabasi, Elyroidea hemiptera. This is also polyphagous pest. Everywhere you are cultivating many vegetables, you can come across. Uh, Spodoptera exigua, sometimes, right? So the major problem in cotton of here. And cotton, uh, the cushion scale, this is also a problem. So that's all uh, here, the okra crops. And we have uh, studied uh, the much of this information. So if you have any clarification or doubts on these today's sections or any other sections, also you can ask questions.